Hello and a very warm welcome to another edition of Talking Germany, the show where we do just that. And my guest today is a man who's had a long, colourful and very intriguing career in German politics. And without any further ado, here he is, Otto Schiele. Thank you very, very much for joining us today. It's a great Hello. privilege, great honour. Now, uh, in his early days as an attorney, Otto Schiele defended some of Germany's most prominent left-wing terrorists. He was one of the founding members of the country's Green Party, and in more recent times, as a Social Democrat interior minister, he's made a name for himself as a law and order man. So the question is, who is the real Otto Schiele? <laughs> Otto Schiele, I have mentioned it already, you have had a very fascinating career in German politics over a number of decades with many twists and turns. I was talking to a, a friend of mine who's a very good journalist the other day about you as I was preparing mm. for the show, and he said, mm. Otto Schiele is a bit of an enigma. Are you an enigma? Okay, I have different uh, <laughs> developments in my, in my life, in my biography. Okay, I have also changed this in my, my thoughts. I have quoted a lot of times uh, Pompidou, the former French president. He has said, uh, only stupid people don't change. Yeah. yeah. Uh, or I quoted a very, very um, uh, famous sentence of Bert Brecht, of the Koiner Geschichtnis, Koiner stories. And uh, it's, it uh, goes uh, in this direction. Mr. K, this is a figure, yeah. um, meets uh, after a lot of years a good friend, and the friend goes to him and embracing him and says, So you have not changed, you have not changed. Mm -hmm. And then this ends this story Mr. K became pale. And I say, <laughs> I Don't become pale if I. Um, meet another friend after years. Yeah. I tend to agree. It is, it's unusual and it's a courageous thing in, mm. in life, in political life, to go mm. through changes, to move from one point of yeah. view to another. But in your case, uh, I think it's fair to say that you have gone from being somebody who was certainly in circles outside the establishment, very critical of the establishment, yeah, to becoming an establishment man. Is that fair enough? Okay, well, different, different. I think there is a, a line which com combines it. People say, okay, you were a defense lawyer in this terrorist process, and this doesn't uh, fit to my for later position as a minister of interior. But I say, I, 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 I answer no. It's, it's in different positions, the same basis. Yeah? Um, the, the rule of law. The rule of law. But some of those people, somebody like Gudrun mm. Enslin, who you mm. were defending, yeah. it, this wasn't just, I mean, obviously you were, you were defending her right to get a fair case. Yeah. But this was somebody who was, who was committed to bringing down the state. Yeah, that's true. She was against the state. She was a militant adversary of the state. But in a, in a rule where the law, we have a state of, of, of law, a rule yeah. of law, he has the right to have a fair, fair trial. As everybody this is, does. This, yep. is, uh, this is in our human rights uh, charter of, of, uh, of the European Union. Okay. Otto Schiele, let's go back to your very early days. I think mm. the year was, we heard, we heard it in that report, your family home was raided mm. by the Nazis. I think the year was 1941. Yeah, the, 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 that's a society, anthropologic society, and this uh, uh, society was outlawed. And, These are uh, the followers of yeah, Rudolf yeah, Stein. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then um, my, my parents had to come to the, to the uh, secret police, the Gestapo, and... Uh, our home was searched and all the books were given away, but really? it is nothing against others who Of course, but you were a young man. That must have made an impression. But it was an impact. It was quite an impression. Yes, it was an impression, yeah. Sure. It gives us... And uh, my, my mother always said um, Hitler is a, a villain. Uh, a villain. Uh, mm -hmm. murderer. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you know what has happened when if you had such sentence, you could be brought to court and, and sentenced to death. And so yeah. this was such a, this is a feeling. But 
in comparison to others who suffered so much, it mm. is nothing. Point taken, but, but you went through that experience. I mean, you, you yeah. lived through the Nazi period. You actually yeah. saw it happening yeah. around you, and then yeah. you lived through the post-war period, which was yeah. a, a period of... Uh, yeah. Many people outside Germany, it's not something that they've given awful lots of thought to, to be honest, mm. but it was, a, it was a time also of incredible hardship. What, did that, what impact did that have on you? OK, we, we, we survived the war, and... Uh, and uh, when I look back to this situation, it was a deep impression. Germany in its worst situation ever in history. Uh, this, the, the city's in ruins, but, and what was worse that also the souls, the human beings themselves were in ru were ruins. Yeah, mm -hmm. because so people in their souls, some, some, deep down inside. Yeah, deep down, and uh, I think, um, this has never left me, and therefore I'm so grateful that we we have gone to Europe of today. Mm. And uh, I think for me it's the, the the greatest achievement we ever did in politics to to uh, to have Europe. Something that's often forgotten: Europe yeah. as a peace project. Yeah, yeah, that is the yeah, idea, yeah. ideal yeah, behind yeah. the project. That is what's a. Uh, the beginning, and I think uh, we we shouldn't. It's our obligation, our mm -hmm. responsibility, that to, to this, uh, this prevails. OK. Uh, you, you've mentioned it already. You, you grew up, your parents were followers yeah. of Rudolf Steiner. You, yeah. Your education was very much influenced. Yeah. He was an educational theorist. Yeah. Uh, Rudolf Steiner schools, the Waldorf schools that yeah. are all around the world, they yeah. are very, I think it's fair to say, esoteric. No, I don't. No, no, no. Oh, this, I was, well, well, let me ask the question. This would be a misunderstanding. They should. But do, does the, do the Rudolf Steiner schools go together with the hard man image that people have created around you? I'm trying to work out where you know what, what happened there. You went to one of these schools and you ended up. No, being no, it a was not in Waldorf in schools. No, no. I'm sorry. I, okay. I, I, from your in, background. In my, in my background, in mm -hmm. my, but I never had the privilege to be in a Waldorf school. That was my younger brother Konrad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I must say, I've a little, I profited from this uh, education. So, and this gives you a, a certain basis out to to come through your life. Yeah, you have a, another perception of the world, and um, it makes you very quiet if you have also in your mind the spiritual dimension of human beings. This is another story if you, if you only think you're, you're more or less a strange um, assembling of, of molecules. That's very interesting to hear that from you. I think that a lot of people would think, ah, yes, mm. I know a lot more about Otto Schiele yeah. now, I think, about sort of mm. your, your core, where you're coming mm. from. But when we talk about where you're coming from, I think for you in your political uh, life, your political career, mm. the attacks on America, the 9-11 yeah. attacks on America, they were a very important moment a very in defining important, the very, way you yeah, see yeah. the world. This was yeah? very shocking. And I have very different uh, perception of America. I am... I'm deeply a friend of of United States. They deserve a lot of uh, thanks from us because they were. I always uh, ask the people to remember that young American soldiers uh, sacrificed their lives for our freedom and democracy. Without the Americans, we never had democracy in Germany. Mm -hmm. They defeated Hitler. Mm -hmm and his terrorist regime, and we shouldn't forget, never, never forget this. They pre preserved the freedom of Berlin. I li live in Berlin since 50 years, so... But at the other hand, I was uh, very disappointed about the Vietnam War, what has happened in Indochina, and okay. other stories. Okay. So, these are two sides. But I'm, I'm in, in, in deep going roots, I'm a good friend. And then the shock of uh, September 11, what happened. And uh, we had to have, uh, to show that we are closest friends of America. And, uh, and it's not only what has happened, this by Al-Qaeda was not only a threat for America, it's a threat for all of us. Okay, we'll talk about that yeah. point in just mm. a second. We're talking about politics and one current trend here in Germany, at least according to many commentators, is what you might call anti-politics. When are demonstrations good and when are demonstrations bad? 
Okay, the positive uh, side is that the people is interested in, in exactly. politics. That's They're good. That's good. Yeah. But the problem is uh, if these kind of demonstrations are one issue discussions and they come very late and uh, then the legal procedure gets uh, becomes to fail, then it's a little bit mm. difficult because democracy, that's a famous observation, democracy is legal procedure also, yeah? Mm. And uh, the peaceful... Uh, links between human beings in a, in a peaceful societies are defined as legal procedures. So we have our courts, we have our administration, we have uh, the rule of law. And uh, if then by protesters all this is going away, this, this, can't, this can't work. And I think the biggest mistake uh, regarding this railway station you are You're in Stuttgart, it. in the Stuttgart. major railway the, project. is yeah. not, the procedure was, in, was okay. It was watertight. Yeah. Uh, but um, the communication, it mm. was a failure of communication. There should be, the whole procedure be accompanied by, by communication with the people to explain it and so. It, there are other exp uh, examples where they did it and nothing happened against... Uh, sure, the, but p part of the problem surely is that very many people in Germany, at least the public opinion survey mm -hmm. seems to say, very many people in Germany don't have all that much confidence in their politicians. Uh, that's yeah. that's a, a bit of an international phenomenon, I know. But, it, I mean, you're at the end of your political career. When you look yeah. back, yeah. Yeah, that must be something that worries you, that troubles you. My experience was not that bad. If I go to the street just today, yeah. the people trust me, I have a lot of confidence. Uh, uh -huh. Because if you have a clear position in politics and, and you don't, uh, the people has not the impression you want to cheat them, you, you come very good along with, very well along with the problems. I, I tell you one story. I was in a, in a home for seniors, you know, mm -hmm. elderly people, mm -hmm. and I had to explain them the situa uh, situation of our pension funds. I said to them, look, you enjoy a better life, a longer life. You become 80, 90, and that's good. But it's more, more expenses for the pension funds. Mm -hmm. We start with the pension before the legal period. So we, you get earlier to the pension. And the workforce is less than before in the, in the production line. So there we have to reduce the pensions. There's no other outcome. And to have another pillar for, for, the, for, for your, uh, your money in, in, in the older ages um, with, the, um, with the capital uh, founded uh, okay, pension well, fund. Yeah, so this combination and the people applaud okay, so, uh, people, But you people must be honest. People accept rational arguments. Yeah, Fair if enough. you are honest yeah. to the people... Yeah, and you're straightforward. Yeah, you must be... Honest. Well, t tell me about you. Do you, when, when you're you know, following politics, mm. watching the evening news or whatever, do you, what do you get angry about? What would you like to protest about? What do you think, I'm not going to let that happen? Okay, I'm not in the age of that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, it's never been but, my experience but if, if, that all the If there was a, a threat for democracy in Germany, I would go to you the You would street. go out on the street? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. To defend the democracy, that would be... When was the last time you took part in a demonstration? Mm, September 11. Uh -huh. After September 11... We so that was a solidarity? Solidarity demonstration, uh, demonstration for mm -hmm. our American friends. Mm. Yeah. And before that? Mm. <laughs> oh. But when you, were, when you were a young uh, man, yeah. Yeah, in your 20s, early 30s, you took part in protests? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? I, I started when I was um, against the Soviet uh, occupation of Hungary. Okay, but when you were interior minister later in the day, you got quite angry about people who took part in very similar protests. No, 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 no. no. That's the way people no, no, see no, it? No, 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 no. Are they unfair total, to you? No, no, a total misunderstanding. Ah. Demonstration is a right in democracy and I would have protected them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, no. I'm, I'm totally in favor of demonstration and people expressing her, her feelings about politics. No, no. Okay. And uh, you shouldn't overlook. I have also was, as a Ministry of Interior, I was also a reform minister. I have reformed our citizenship law. I have reformed our migration law. 
So it's only one side, uh, police and, and to care for security of the people. Mm-hmm. And I'm deeply convinced, I do believe that we need a good structure preserving security for the people. But okay. Because without security, no, no freedom. Okay. Otto Schiele was referring there to the reforming government of Gerhard Schroeder. I think we're going to talk mm. about Chancellor Schroeder in a minute in passing. Uh, now, throughout his career, Otto Schiele has been an ambitious and combative politician, no doubt about that. And I suppose one question is, what does he do to relax? And uh, as we saw earlier, music is one passion. Another is the, the card game, Skart. Now, maybe you don't know what Skart is. Let's find out. Skart is Germany's most popular card game. It's played by millions at local pubs up and down the country. The game involves three players. There are even Skat half marathons where players have to shuffle, bid and score for 12 hours non-stop. Skat was invented back in 1820 in the eastern German town of Altenburg. The town has a long card-making tradition dating back more than 500 years. The first playing cards were painted by hand. Later, simple printing techniques were introduced. These cards, dating back to 1509, are among the oldest playing cards in the world. Altenburg even has a museum dedicated to the subject, where staff have spent more than 50 years researching the history of playing cards. What's interesting about playing cards is that they reflect our entire lives. Whether it's everyday life, the superstitions that people had, relationships between men and women, political matters. You can find everything on playing cards. Today, the Altenburg playing cards are made at a local factory where everything is automated. The cards produced here are sold in more than 120 countries. A playing card isn't just any kind of product, it represents the culture and the games culture of a particular country. So the pictures on the card say something about the identity of the people. Skat has itself been exported all over the world. So both the Altenburg game and the cards are in a way helping to promote German lifestyle and culture. Otto Schiele, uh, we learned from that report that card games tell us about the identity of a country. What does Skat tell us about Germany? OK, I don't know if it tells us <laughs> something about Germany, but I like this game. It's a strategic game uh-huh. and a nice combination of strategic um, uh, thinking and, and luck. Hmm? It's a very unusual game that you have three players playing in yeah. a game. Yeah, yeah three, uh, only one against two. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And um, shows you have to have a good memory that you know what, what cards have been played already mm-hmm. and you have to a little bit calculate how many p- points. And then you have the, the, uh, the, 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 the form of the game, which we call rumsh. Then you, 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 <laughs> you are obliged not to have Many points, uh-huh. as few as possible, yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah, that's it. OK, so you've given me a little bit of an idea about Scout. My problem is, it's a complicated game, isn't it? It's, no, there not, are lots so, of not that complicated. Not, that, not complicated? that complicated. But, uh, you know, it, it uh, needs a little bit of imag- imagination oh. also. In, mm-hmm. You have to have fantasy. How can you combine your cards and how is the, uh, also psychology, how Psycho- well behave these uh, mm-hmm. other parts. If you, you, as one person, you, you got the game and now you have to, to bring your game through uh, against two others. What and kind of player are you? Are you aggressive, defensive, cautious, flamboyant? I'm risk, uh, yeah, I take the risk. You yeah. take the big risk? Yeah, yeah. What about Gerhard Schroeder? You used to play, well, we mentioned him already. I've got to... I he is a very good player a, a good and player. he wins a lot. Uh, and we always play, that's a very nice combination with Schroeder, former chancellor, yeah. or Markus Lüppertz, who is a famous um, artist. Uh, yeah, who yeah. was on the show here, a very yeah. great guest. Yeah, he's yeah. a friend of yours? Yeah, he's a very oh, close a friend. Yeah, and, we liked and, him. and Jürgen yeah. Rossmann, who's the head of a big okay. uh, energy company. Who wins? Mm, Chile? It changes, it changes. <laughs> I'm the best, for, for sure. I'm the best. You're, you're the best for sure, yeah, are you? Yeah. yeah.
Um, OK, we're going to move on to our uh, quiz, our traditional quiz at the end of Talking yeah. Germany. Quick questions, quick answers. What do you prefer, playing skat or playing music? Music. Are you an idealist or a realist, Mr Sheely? Both. Both. <laughs> In politics, left or right? A centre. <laughs> I knew you were going to say left, that. Centre left, yeah. left. Centre say. left, yeah. What's your favourite colour, red or green? It's a combination, red and green. <laughs> Trick question. Who's the better Chancellor, Gerhard Schroeder or Angela Merkel? Gerhard Schroeder. Gerhard sure. Schroeder. I think we're going to leave it there. We've had a very, very... Uh, the, uh, Otto Schiele, long career in politics, perhaps enigmatic, certainly compelling, certainly interesting. He's been a great guest. If you've enjoyed his company as much as I have, then do come back next week. Until then, bye-bye and tschüss.